Hi everyone. Um, today I'm just going to review a little something. I just had my midwife meeting appointment two days ago. I'm currently 30 weeks and four days right now. We were feeling baby and she did mention that baby is breached or, you know, baby's head is up here, which is around 30 weeks, you know, baby should start going around the other way while there's still room for the movement to occur. I mean, it's still pretty early on, you know, a lot of women have a breached baby at like 36 weeks and they end up doing all these exercises and stuff um, throughout their days to get their baby to turn and you know, it works out fine for them. If I'm at 30 weeks, I'm trying to get these exercises done as early as I can, but I'm gonna show you guys what I've been trying to do at home for these past few days. So the inverted one that I mentioned to you earlier, let's see. I feel like my couch is a little bit too high sometimes for me, but I have this little relaxing bed pillow that I have, so I just use it for my elbows for this specific workout and most of the workouts I've been doing are stretches or sitting, I don't know, positions. So, gotta be careful, don't fall, please, pregnant moms out there, do not fall. Um, it really takes my breath out, you know, but I'm sure if you're more fit than I am, then you probably are able to do this with ease and you're not straining your weight or like your shoulders or your back or anything doing this. Um, yeah, just try to breathe through it and relax. My face might get a little red. Um, my upper arm strength isn't so good, but um, yeah, there's like a little, the little crevice where my couch, where my couch, well, the little crevice on the couch right here is where I, like right now I currently have my toes and like most of my foot jammed in there. That way I have somewhere to kind of like use my toes to grip on when I'm going down. So I prevent myself from falling. So. I have that, get down to my arms, and then you can start seeing the weight. Try to keep your back flat, but the weight is all coming down here now, so gravity is doing its job by pushing everything this way. That way, baby is more motivated to kind of turn head up this way towards where, well, obviously where my bum is, where, where my, Excuse me, I'm already tired of breathing. Okay, my birth canal is, <laughs> so baby can turn there and, well, that's what we're trying to do, so hopefully it works. So you can do it this way, this is probably good. I like to go down a little more like this, and then sometimes you can just get down all the way down onto your elbows. And just kind of breathe through it a few seconds. And okay, so you're done, come back up. My goal is to try to do this, you know, three, four times a day, and as well as doing other exercises that are a little bit easier on you or me, and doing those a little bit more throughout the day as well. The other exercise that I do pretty regularly, even when I'm watching, especially when I'm watching TV, is getting my big yoga ball. I have the smaller one, but when I bought it, and I blew it up, it seemed very small. So, but um, yeah, this ball, the little one, you know, it's helpful, which I'll show you when and where right now. But yeah, so grab my big yoga ball and I do like the hip rotations, you know? So do a couple one way and then switch it up a couple more the other way. You know, you can count and do 10 and 10 or 15 and 15 or five and five. This also is good for getting you to have a nice position, like a good posture. I have been lagging sometimes when I sit down and watch TV when I'm like relaxing. I leave my yoga ball in my room and I come watch TV in the living room and it's not helpful because I'm sitting. So when I get on the couch, I like to just sit like this. And I have a really bad habit of crossing my legs so even if I'm doing this or like I'm sleeping or like I'm just hanging out like this I cross my legs a lot which you know when you're pregnant you probably should not be crossing your legs but 
it's so funny because every baby shower I go to and they give you the necklace or the pin or whatever little thing they give you for playing that one game where you don't have where you can't cross your arms you can't cross your legs first five minutes I'm out like as soon as I put that little little necklace or whatever they give you on it's like my mind forgets I'm playing this game and I quickly go to cross my legs and I lose when they said okay when you're pregnant don't cross your legs like this is where you learn not to cross your legs this is why let me tell you this is why the the moms at the baby showers the ones that already have one two, one or more kids win that game every time or a guy if, but um yeah the moms tend to win because they know they've been through many a lot of my family members have been through several pregnancies and they know not to cross their legs so I always lose and I'm still losing while pregnant because I'm still crossing my legs and that's not good so this week my mindset is like remind like I'm trying to remind myself when I'm eating dinner watching TV hanging out with friends whatever the case may be if I'm sitting I need to remember to sit right and not even ladylike because you can't as your bump gets bigger it's harder to like sit like this so now a good technique of like when you're sitting down is sitting at the edge of your seat so if you're on the couch sit on the edge of the couch if you're on a chair sit on the edge of the chair so kind of slide your butt forward a little bit and open your legs so maybe not too ladylike but just keep your legs open and again this gives room for baby to slide down in there and like have this little cushion like oh this is pretty comfortable for my head you know hopefully that kind of motivates so yeah so there's those ones so sitting in a good posture don't cross your legs because I did feel like I do feel now when I cross my legs it's like it's uncomfortable but I want to do it so bad it's just like a bad habit of mine like once I start doing it I get stuck doing it all day every day so I'm trying not to cross my legs but sometimes I do feel like a pinch or something. So, you know, definitely a sign that crossing your legs is a no-no for baby. Okay, so as you can see behind me, I have this little setup going on with my smaller yoga balls. I found it very useful when doing this exercise for trying to get my baby to turn. Yeah, and again, I use my little back resting pillow and then I grab one of the pillows from the couch. Uh, probably, you know, depending on how comfortable it is for you when you get down to the position I'm going to show you um, you may want to switch to a bigger pillow but right now for me it's still a little bit uncomfortable to do so I don't want to elevate myself too much I'm gonna move the ball out of the way because it's better to put this up first I mean it's better to put this up last that way I I did fall last time trying to get on the ball first and throw myself back so don't do that so I'm going to put my butt higher up, let me tuck this a little more up, so I don't know if you can see a little bit, I am a little bit my hip area is a little bit more elevated than my shoulders and my head so again same idea of trying to move organs and all of my all of my bodily space internal space to kind of push down this way that way baby can feel a little bit more crowded up here and feel with his or her legs or arms, you know, feel that there's some extra space up here and this will kind of motivate baby to be like, hey, well, you know what? I need to keep oxygen flow, flow going to my head. I need to move this head this way. So just kind of laying here for a good 10 minutes, a few times a day, I can just sit and relax for a little bit and let gravity take over. Some moms actually do the one where they're on the yoga mat and they, well, let me do it without the ball. They kind of 
elevate their pelvis up into the air like this. Um, you can do that as well with the pillows. It helps support it. makes it easier that you're not like straining your abdominal areas or abdominal muscles. But um, yeah, doing that as well can also give you that elevated motion. But I get tired of doing that one pretty quick. So I just do this and lay down. And let me just kind of roll over. Uh. <sighs> okay, so I went over th over some positions that I've been working on and trying to get my baby to turn and I hope they work. Another technique I didn't mention was an ice pack. Some women, I don't have an ice pack. I haven't purchased one yet. I mean, I can probably grab like a vegetable bag and kind of put it up here to make it cold up here and baby's head is gonna be right there feeling all this cold touch from that part of my belly. So again, it's another way of trying to motivate baby to like, hey, it's kind of cold up here. I'm gonna put my feet here instead of my, my, or my butt here instead of my head. I'd rather have my feet or my butt wet. I mean, cold. <laughs> so I need to definitely go purchase an ice pack today and leave it on there throughout the day a few times a day to kind of motivate the turning as well or I have my heating pad so I can also get my heating pad and kind of place it down here on my lower abdomen and again baby's gonna want to go towards the warmer area hopefully or in theory if you want to say but it should help and hope my appointment is in less than two weeks so we'll see what my midwife has to say about baby's positioning next time I meet with her. So, you know, remember posture is important. Doing these exercises or these positions I was showing you earlier are important. Don't cross your legs. Um, get that ice pack, you know. And again, this should motivate baby to have room down there for the baby's head. And if your baby is in a very optimal position right now, great. But if you're like me, at 30 weeks, you know, and you wanna start planning ahead, then let's do this. Let's continue working on these exercises or positions and, you know, little techniques with the ice pack or the heating pad. Also, there's chiropractics out there um, that are, you know, able to turn the baby or masseuse the lady that I mentioned before I have we have this lady in our family that she's been doing this like all her life we try to get her to turn the baby and usually she's successful pretty much all the time so if it looks like baby's not turning like around 34 weeks 33 34 weeks I'm probably gonna go pay her a visit and see if she can flip baby over and then again I'm gonna have to keep continuing these positions and exercises just to kind of keep baby in that turn position so if you guys have someone around you that you're comfortable with and you know that can turn the baby or if you can ask a friend or google up any people that in your area that are able to do this and are highly recommended um i hope you do but um some moms like to get um ultrasound so after they have the baby moved they'll get ultrasounds just to kind of see that the baby didn't get the cord wrapped around the neck so go ahead and Comment below on any other positions or any other exercises you have been working on, if you've done any that might be helpful to other moms watching these videos right now, or even if like a success story or a non-success story, you know, because it can happen either way to either any of us. So please let me know. Please let all of us viewers know what you have been up to. Thank you.